Hey everyone, we're gonna take a look at the second live stream I ever did. I want you to know that while the video maybe doesn't look as well produced as the content I released today, it's still gonna be really fun to watch and the quality should still be up there. Hi, welcome to my stream. What I'm doing today is I've gone to a few websites that do code challenges and I'm gonna try them out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to read through this and figure out what to do. I've never done this before, so I don't know how it's gonna go. Let's try it out. If we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of three or five, we get three, five, six, and nine. Some of these is 23 which is higher than 10. Finish the solution so that it returns the sum of all of the multiples below the number past 10. Now we need to make a code. This is the code part. Note if your number is multiple of both three and five, only count it once. This is a fizzbuzz question. I don't really remember what that is, but that's definitely what's going on here. Let's yesixify this and figure out what we want to do. If we have a number, we want to do this work first to find all the multiples. I need to first figure out what the multiples are of this number and see if below that this number, four, three, and a five. So there are a few ways to do this. A simple one would be just loop through it. If you want to loop through this, what would we do? Let's go ahead and make it so that we got a number coming in and we want to know what that number is. We want to make sure we're getting that number. I'm pretty sure I know what it is. Let's see, the test here would run with 10 and then 23. It looks like it takes two variables but we're only taking one. I don't understand what solution here is. Okay, solution is right here. Solution takes n, and then test must be like passing different values into, yeah, uh, this is expected. If you pass 10, you should get 23 back. That makes more sense. Now we need to figure out how to do this. Man, when you're doing a stream like this, you put on the spot, you get these spotlights on you. It's a lot harder to figure out these problems. All right, let's try this. We need to get stuff below a certain number. We know we have to loop divisions of this. Let's see if we can do any other math here. This is it's a multiple. That means if you mod it, you'll get zero. I know that much. Percent some number and you'll get zero. In this case, three is one of the numbers and five is the other. So we want to make sure that it's five. So let's try something like this. I think I'm getting somewhere now. Something like this or number mod five is equal also to zero. Then that tells us that Nothing. That's not actually what we want. We don't want number to be that. But this is the uh, this is the max. I think max would be easier. If that, and then we've got to loop from zero to the maximum. Or actually, we can loop from five and up because we know three and five are always going to be there. We can loop from five and up, and go from that standpoint. That way, we don't have to start at zero because we know what these numbers are. If we loop here, I really don't want to do a for loop. Is there another way to do this? Yes, we can do an array and create an array from scratch. We're going to create, I think you can do it like this. And we're going to fill it with, I don't want it to be null. I honestly don't want it to be numbers, but then we can map it. Let's do something like this. Let's start off with creating something that we can use. If we have an array with maximum, I think that creates an array of that size, but it doesn't have any values. You can fill them with null, it's fine. And then now we got a map, and we basically want to say... The first one is the value we have, which is doesn't matter. It's null. Now the second one is the... Man, I'm forgetting everything. What is it? It's not the index. Yeah, it is. Oh. Because the third one is the array. Then we have the index. Oh my goodness. So basically, the index is the number. Now, when we're done with that, we can do our check here to see if we should include the number and then filter it. I wonder if this would be a filter here. And then we can figure out what we want to do from there. We have our value. And now our value is a number, and then we can do this check in this filter. I'm going to use a ternary, but we honestly do need to know if it's either or both. It says if it's a sum of both of them, let's see, it returns the sum of all the multiples of three or five. We already know that much. If the number is a multiple of both, only once. I think we're just counting every single number once. We're not doing two different loops here. We might want to do two different loops, but let's we'll see if this works. Let's see if this is going to accomplish what we're trying to do. I've got a filter here, and that will help us solve this problem, but I still am a little making sure if this, then we'll keep it. Yeah, that would keep the number. And inst instead of value, yeah, it'll be value. I think this is right. Let's go ahead and run it and test it. See what happens. Yeah, missing initializer in const declaration. Maybe if we actually returned the value of this. Does it want an array back? Let's see. Turns the sum of them. No, we're going to have to calculate this with the, with the reduce at the end. I really don't want to write the reduce right now. I just want to make sure that this is getting us what we expect. 
Is there a way to like log this? If I console.log it. And then if I return it, it'll just say it's the wrong answer. No, it doesn't, it doesn't like this. Maybe this doesn't work with, okay. Please say I can use new, newer ES. Unexpected token. Yeah, this is all not making any sense now. Is it not reading this because I switched it to ES6 mode? Dude, I have no clue what's going on. Here's how you fix this. Refresh. Hmm, this is still broken. Let's see if it's up here. Is there like way to rerun this so that I can fix their bug? Closure script, and then we go to JavaScript. Hopefully we didn't lose everything. Node. That one. And then we test it. Yeah, I don't understand. I'm hoping it would just say, hey, we didn't get the right number. I don't like the fact that it's saying, hey, oh. Maybe if I wrote the function correctly. Interesting. Did not expect it to shift. Basic tests. Let's see. We have uh, we have a log. That is exactly what I was hoping to see. That's what we're getting. We're getting 3569 and 0. Yeah, like I said earlier, we don't need the initial value. What if we want to say uh, filter from here? We can filter from here. This sucks that we have to put a whole filter. Can I not include 0 somehow? Can I... Let's get rid of this console log. We don't need it now. We know that we're getting the right numbers. I wish it would log this for us though. As you're going through it, I can put a breakpoint here and see what's going on. I don't know how to use this tool, so I can't really test that. Yeah, three, five, six, nine. That is correct. We just don't want the zero. I'm wondering if we can get rid of it somehow. I I know, I know, I know, I know. We do this and we slice uh -huh, from one on. <laughs> now we don't have zero. I don't have to account for it here because this is clever. This is not like a good solution for production, but I really don't want the first value. In fact, I don't want the first three values. Yeah, because I just want three and up. And that'll prevent us from looping extra where we don't need to. I wonder... Yeah, I can't do it here. Because if I do it here, then it's getting the index. It'd have to be like index plus three. And that's like extra math. I don't want to I don't want to make it too confusing. I really just... I wonder if I could just be doing one of these. If it's... If value is not equal to zero. And the value is... A mod 3 of 0 or a mod 5 of 0, then keep it. That way we don't have to do this cheat. I like the cheat because it's clever, but I don't like the cheat for, like, production code. I, I would want to be explicit about the fact that we don't care about 0. And, yeah, we're doing two extra loops. Who cares? It's not a big deal. Expected 23, uh-huh, got an array. Yes, which is what I expected to have happen. I guess I didn't need a console log earlier. But now we got to write a reduce. And our reduce is going to start with a 0, I think. Yeah, because we're going to sum everything. And then we're going to... Return. This is like a simple one. This is just, yeah, I'm, I'm going to write a little bit different. But this is like a really simple reducer. Right. We've got our combined value, which is our total, and our a number. We have a number. I don't know if you do value or number. We've been doing value the whole place. So this would be like number. Uh, but I, I don't want to confuse it with the maximum. But this is just a value. And it'd be just total plus max uh, to, plus value. And actually, I would put value first. Let's see. No. When you're doing a reduce, you care about the total first. Just doing that. Oops. Keep hitting escape, and it keeps going back. I think this is going to work now. Hey, we're done. I think it'll work. Let's make sure we got it right. Yeah, this code is fine. So this is really simple code. I've heard of FizzBuzz problems, and they never look this simple. They look really ridiculous. Maybe this is not a FizzBuzz, or maybe it has to do with how it logs. Valid array length. Interesting. Are they passing zero? Uh, no, they're passing a very large number. But that's fine. Oh, these passed. What's the case that did not pass? Tell me what failed. I don't understand. But failed, but it doesn't tell me why. So this one, like for instance, it says test passed, it's value this. I want to know what the test was that broke. Can you at least give me the maximum that you passed in? How am I supposed to debug this? Do I have to, here, let's cheat this. Uh, console.log maximum. I can't tab, can I? Man, being in a different code editor there. What's failing? Minus one. Didn't tell me the numbers are going to be... Yeah, they also didn't tell me they're going to be just positive. I guess I assumed that because the number has to be greater than three based on the fact that it has to be a multiple of three. If you put minus one, what would cause it to error? Invalid array length. Oh, we have to math abs this thing. But then if we're going through and it's a minus here, I would actually have to check here if this it's the minus, and I'd have to I have to multiply it by negative one if the maximum. Yeah, I really don't like this now. How can we do? We want a second map statement to do that. 
Or should it just be part of this map statement where we're getting the value here? I do want to, first thing I'm going to do is math.abs, because what should we do on negative one? Let's think through this. It is not less, it's, it's not going to be less than three. We don't even care about it. Like we should return what? Zero? What do you expect if it's minus one? Everything works that's positive. It's all doing exactly what we care about. It's saying we need to calculate the sum of the multiple of the sum of the multiples of three of five below the number passed in, which is zero. If you put in negative one, it's just zero. We don't even need that. We just need to check if it's negative. And if it is negative, or actually if it's below three, then we just return. Yeah, I don't want to be honestly below three. I, I think I'm just going to go with negative because it'll work for every positive number. If there's a zero here that won't run the reduce, it should run the reduce and just have a zero. I'm curious what happens if this is zero. They're not testing it, sadly. I want them to test with a zero. See, I'm looking for it. Yeah, they're not testing with a zero. I wonder if our code will even work in that, that case. We can test this separately in a different, we can just do this. And we can make sure that this is a zero here. We just do solution, oops, solution zero. And I'm not gonna put a const here because I want to be able to redefine it if I need to. Yeah, it's zero, perfect. So it's just the negative one case that's the problem. And in the case of negative one, we just wanna say if maximum is less than zero, I guess that's the easiest way to do it, then return zero. Otherwise, return this complicated math. It's just not really that complicated, it's just a functional pipeline. You know, I don't even know if I can hear when people message me. If somebody puts a message in Twitch or somewhere else, I don't even know if it'll make it sound. I'm a little curious to see if that'll happen or not. I can move the chat here so it's a little bit easier to see. I think that's it. Is there anything else? Test. Yeah. Cool. Attempt. We know it's going to work. We, I didn't need to test it. I just needed to attempt it again. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. There are all their negative numbers right there. This must have been... Small, smallest cases? Here's a three right here. I'm wondering if they passed in a three. Yeah, they had to pass, and this is three and five. They passed in a five here. We did exactly what it was, cool. We can submit that. Pretty proud of that solution, except for this ternary here. This is where I would break it down into a separate function. We would first, we'd have a check, and that check would wrap this, and then if the check passed, then we would do this math. I hope you enjoyed that video. I know I did. I actually really enjoyed watching back and seeing how I solved this problem and the things that came up for me.